Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace today the credentials of 12 newly appointed ambassadors to Bahrain. His Majesty received the credentials of the ambassador of Comoros, Al Habib Abbas Abdullah, the ambassador of Chile, George de Karat, the ambassador of Kazakhstan, Berekarin, the ambassador of Armenia, Her Kamutuman, the ambassador of Hungary, Bala Selmik, the ambassador of Greece, Kostanitos Peperegos, the ambassador of Rwanda, Emmanuel Hatigeka, the ambassador of Spain, Miguel Jose Moro Aguilar, the ambassador of Guatemala, Lars Peraz Perez, the ambassador of Slovenia, Otto Pungartnik, the ambassador of Zimbabwe, Crispin Toga Mavodza, and the ambassador of Peru, Jose Luis Salinas Montes. His Majesty exchanged with the new ambassadors welcoming speeches on the occasion hailing the relations between Bahrain and their broadly and friendly countries and their progress in all fields wishing the ambassadors success in their diplomatic duties of enhancing cooperation with the kingdom. The ambassadors conveyed the greetings of their country's leaders and their wishes of abundant health and happiness to His Majesty and of further progress and prosperity to the kingdom commending the ties between their countries and Bahrain. Also present were the personal representative of His Majesty the King, the Minister of the Royal Court, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Royal Protocols Chief. The ambassadors had arrived to Sakhir Palace where they were received by the Chief of the Royal Protocol.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa yesterday chaired the weekly cabinet meeting remotely. The cabinet extended congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the decision of the Board of Trustees of Moscow State University of International Relations, granting him an honorary directorate decree in recognition of his prominent role in promoting peaceful coexistence and dialogue between different religions and cultures. The cabinet commended the launch of the second edition of the Princess Abika bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa Global Award for Women's Empowerment by the United Nations. It affirmed that the award is an extension of the ongoing progress and development of Bahraini women, which continues to receive the support of His Majesty the King and the consort of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa. Recognizing the Kingdom's achievements in being assigned a Tier 1 status in the U.S. Department of State's 2021 Trafficking in Persons Report for a for the consecutive year, the cabinet commended the foundations laid by His Majesty the King that have strengthened institutions and legislations based on the principles of justice and fairness and praised His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's role in further strengthening the kingdom's legislative environment and developing mechanisms that support the fight against human trafficking. Moving to national COVID-19 efforts, the cabinet stressed that the newly implemented COVID-19 alert level traffic light system will continue to protect the health and safety of citizens and residents, adding that everyone's cooperation is needed to ensure the health and safety of all. The Cabinet underscored the importance of development projects in furthering the Kingdom's competitiveness, noting the importance of expediting the construction of various projects within specific timeframes in line with His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's directives. The Cabinet reviewed the approved master plans of the Sport City and the Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center projects, both located in Sakhir. The city contains multiple integrated sports and entertainment amnesties, including a stadium, multi-use hall, a multi-facility complex, and commercial facilities. The convention and exhibition center includes 10 exhibition halls with the latest services necessary to host international events and exhibitions in a main conference center equipped with the most advanced display facilities for a capacity for approximately 4,000 people and several medium-sized halls and multi-purpose spaces. The Cabinet reviewed the following topic, a memorandum on the performances of government agencies that evaluate the role of three systems in enhancing the efficiency, productivity and quality of services provided to citizens and support offered to commercial and investment enterprises. To date, 247,060 complaints and suggestions to 44 government agencies have been registered. The percentage of delays in responding to requests was reduced from 59% in 2014 to 3% in 2021. Vinayat, between January and June 2021, 22,432 requests were submitted to the building permit system and all were answered. Sijilat, from January 2020 to June 2021, 433,683 requests were submitted to the Sijilat system. In total, 99.8% of requests were completed and only 3% of requests experienced a delayed response. The Cabinet then approved the following memorandum. A memorandum by the Minister of Finance and National Economy regarding the annual report and audited financial statements for the Future Generations Fund for the fiscal year ending on the 31st of December 2020. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the government's response to two law proposals submitted by the Real Council of Representatives. The Cabinet concluded by noting the result of the participation in the Mohammed bin Zayed Award for Best GCC Teacher, an official trip to Italy and the Russian Federation and other foreign trips and visits of officials to Bahrain. The Cabinet also reviewed the outcomes of the second meeting of the GCC Ministerial Committee for Standardization Affairs. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received the Ambassador of Bahrain to the State of Israel, Khalid Yusuf Al Jalahma, at Rafah Palace. His Royal Highness extended his congratulations on the issuance of the Royal Decree appointing the Ambassador as head of the diplomatic mission to the State of Israel. His Royal Highness wished the Ambassador success in his duties and emphasized the importance of furthering the Kingdom's efforts to promote peace and tolerance in support of regional development and stability.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa held a remote meeting with the Ambassador of Italy to Bahrain. Paula Amadei, His Royal Highness, noted that growing bilateral ties have created new mutually beneficial avenues of cooperation and continue to fulfill both nations' aspirations before reviewing topics of common interest. For her part, the Ambassador expressed her appreciation for His Royal Highness's support towards continuing bilateral cooperation. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa was reassured of the safety of passengers and cabin crew following a minor incident that occurred on a Gulf Air flight from Bahrain to Kuwait. His Royal Highness extended his gratitude to the crew members for the measures they took in dealing with the incident. His Royal Highness expressed appreciation for the support provided by Kuwait's authorities to crew members, adding that their collaboration ensured the safety of all passengers. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Works and Youth Affairs and chairman of the National Oil and Gas Holding Company, Noga Holding, Zainal Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the inaugural virtual meeting of Noga Holding's newly appointed board of directors. His Highness reiterated the pivotal role of the oil and gas sector as a key economic driver, in line with the royal visions of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the aspirations of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. His Highness stated that that Noga Holding is mandated to realize the kingdom's ambitions by continuing to effectively invest in the oil and gas sector in line with the national economic priorities. His Highness instructed to align the company's strategic plan with the kingdom's economic vision of Bahrain 2030. His Highness stressed on the immediate need to improve the efficiency and management of existing resources, adopt the highest levels of governance across Noga Holding, its subsidiaries and operating companies, and for innovation to be at the center of Noga Holding strategy moving forward. During the meeting, His Highness discussed with the Board of Directors the vision and the future strategic direction of Noga Holding. The management also presented to the Board of Directors the latest updates and developments on the company's plans and operations. Representatives Council Speaker Fawziya bint Abdullah Zainal held a telephone call with the Jordanian Parliament Speaker Abdul Munam Saleh Al Oudat. They discussed ways of bilateral cooperation, activating joint action, and building on advanced relations between the two kingdoms under the leadership of His Majesty the King and His Majesty King Abdullah II. The Speaker praised the depth of the Bahraini Jordanian relations and the steady progress they are witnessing, stressing the importance of enhancing parliamentary cooperation in the interest of the two countries and people. The the Jordanian speaker expressed pride in the permanent coordination on various regional and international issues between the two countries, praising the solidarity positions of Bahrain's leadership, governments and people with Jordan. The Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, the SCYS, Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, affirmed the organization of the first sports cardiology conference in December, along with an awareness campaign that has multiple educational programs under the slogan Athlete's Heart. He said that organizing such events reflects the government's keenness to provide health care to citizens, stressing that the health sector in the kingdom is witnessing continuous development in light of the comprehensive development process led by. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the continuous directives of the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Secretary General valued the interest of His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian works and youth affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, in the work of the conference and the awareness campaign, noting that it comes within his continuous follow up and recommendations in the issues of deaths during exercise. The National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus announced that the booster dose interval for high-risk individuals has been reduced to one month after receiving a second dose of the vaccine. High-risk individuals include those who are 50 years of age and above, those who suffer from obesity and immune system deficiencies, as well as frontline responders. The decision was announced after studying the latest evidence on immune response and protection against the virus. The task force highlighted the importance of taking a booster dose to enhance the immune system for high-risk individuals 
individuals, especially those who are 50 years and above. The booster dose will relieve symptoms and complications in the event of infection with the virus, including the possibility of serious illness and death. It also emphasized the importance of following all precautionary measures, including taking a vaccine and the booster dose if necessary to ensure all national efforts aimed at combating the COVID-19 are supported. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,075,940 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,005,161 had taken the second, and 72,900 had taken the booster dose. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 1,821 with 559 recoveries, 131 registered new cases and 3 deaths. 61 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 58 are contacts of active cases and 12 are travel related. The Ministry expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.